Hello everybody, Pinstripe here. What is going on? Welcome back to the Hogshead Podcast. Today we're on episode 8, I believe. I know it's been like 3 months since the last one, and I greatly apologise for that, by the way. Lots of other things have gotten in the way, lots of other content and videos and animations and plans. There's just so much going on. It's difficult sometimes to keep track of absolutely everything that I have going on, but the podcast is still up and coming. It's still got some episodes in it, and I will, of course, be having guests on at some point, so do stay tuned for future episodes. Uh, But today we're going to be continuing the talk about the classes that I made, and indeed uh, conversing about other uh, custom classes that have been made by other people within the discord as well because uh, it's always good to look at our ideas and discuss them as much as we can if you haven't seen the uh, character concept video that i did regarding my own custom pig ranks of the civilian warden and commissar then do go ahead and look that up first before you then uh, watch this podcast otherwise you'll have no idea what's going on Uh, but yeah there was some good feedback as well a lot of people were getting into detailed discussions about uh, the weapon choices that I made and you know the overall effectiveness of each individual rank. Uh, so that was good to see. I always enjoy uh, sort of starting off a conversation topic or being able to help extend that idea further as well, you know? Um, so the civilian, like I said, uh, I decided to kind of keep it uh, as, <laughs> I guess a good word, uh, bland as possible uh, because... Uh, I have obviously seen the, he's not really a civilian, or maybe he is, maybe he is an example of a civilian, but the uh, character that sits in the house on mission 5, who kind of looks like he's asleep in his chair, that's the closest thing you kind of have to a civilian. Uh, The colour combinations they used, and the colour palettes they used, sorry, on that model uh, are different to mine, but again, I just picked colours that uh, went for that sort of very blandish civilian type character i don't really know how else to describe it i mean you take one look at it you kind of know that that character isn't involved in the military in any way you know so that's the immediate effect that i wanted to give and i think it came off quite nicely and like i said the armband choice uh, i was thinking of doing the same of having both the armband and the uh, headwear the same color of the the team that whatever Uh, that pig represents Uh, but I didn't really go for that because uh, it didn't really look that good as other colors it matched his clothing like the secondary brown color Uh, so that was the main reason for that one but overall it it, it came out quite nicely I was pleased with the uh, efficiency that I was able to model uh, these things because I'm I'm not a 3d modeler I, I know how to do it but I'm not great at it. I know the very basics, I know how to uh, go ahead and make stuff, but they're never that amazing. As I said in the video, this is something that I want to take forward and make more of in the future, but you'll have to be patient uh, because it tends to go in certain stages of, you know, I have this major hype for a new video series, Uh, I make one of them, I make two of them maybe, Uh, And then, you know, that hype slowly dissipates and it only really comes back whenever I feel like it. So whenever I can fit it in to my schedule, you know, alongside all the other video series, all the other side projects and having uh, a full time job as well. You know, when it's in that mix, it takes a lot of time. uh, So you'll have to bear with me. But getting back to the civilian class, as I said in that video as well, he had 65 health and is equipped with a trotter shotgun and freeze gas. Now the freeze gas is something that I wanted to incorporate into this class primarily because like I said it is only used in multiplayer and it needs to be seen more and it is a good replacement to the tranquilizer uh, and a bunch of other rifle based weapons. I didn't want to make him like the scout, I didn't want to make him like the spy, I I wanted to you know kind of create an in-between that was you know not engineer class, not espionage class, it was something completely different And that's why when you get to Warden, you have the homing missiles, you have the maneuverability of the jetpack. uh, And maybe it is a bit underpowered, maybe it could have done with, you know, replacement of certain weapons. But I enjoyed the mix of it. I felt like I could have gone with either the homing missile or the guided missile. Uh, But then again, getting to Commissar, that's when you add in the rocket launcher. So you have 
some more hard hitting weapons. Uh, maybe it could have done with an extra ammo, so maybe having two rocket launchers. Uh, but obviously the drawback to it is that the rocket launcher needs a line of sight. So it's kind of like a sniper rifle, but rocket form, I guess. And it does 50 damage. So again, you have an extra 10 uh, compared to the homing missile. And again, being able to uh, make enemies miss their turn with the freeze gas. Combined with the shotgun, which is basically a rifle version of the grenade. It does 30 damage. It requires you to be fairly close to your target, which as I said, is, you know, the main play style for the uh, resistance class as a whole. You need to get up close to the enemy. You need to just disrupt them as much as you can and almost use yourself as a distraction, I guess. That's kind of what I was getting at. Um, but I want to read some people's comments and sort of discuss what other people had to say as well, uh, because there were some good things thrown about there. So we're going to start with uh, the YouTube comments, I guess, and then we're going to get on to some of the other uh, custom classes that you guys have been discussing. I primarily want to focus on Caster's uh, custom class ideas only because he's laid his out in a neat fashion within a PDF, which is very handy for me. But if you have uh, any custom class ideas, of course, let me know in the comments, but also send them my way if you're on Discord as well. I'd be happy to read them. Uh, but we're going to start with Caster's comment, which is... Uh, in terms of the resistance class, I like the idea and the backstory and also that you included the freeze gas. I just have the feeling that they would be too weak. But on the other hand, freeze gas would come in handy. Also, the concept designs are great. It may be a little hard to difference the warden by color, which I suppose is true. Otherwise, I really like them and a hide ability would maybe fit in too. And a last question, would they be able to see mines? Um, I'm going to say no to the mines only because... Like I said, I want it to be an in-between between the espionage and the engineer class. You know, I don't want them to have the abilities of any other class uh, that have come before them. I know the shotgun is used by the engineer, but like I said, I was going for the whole close range thing. Um, and the hide ability as well, I, I primarily, like I said before, I don't really use it that often. Um, so I wouldn't put it in there as well, but... It could fit in. Maybe other people may disagree. I like to think that people would. Um, but thank you for your comment as well. And thank you uh, for your uh, ideas. Next up, we have a comment from Biggest Dickus who says, As for weapons, I don't really see the connection. While freeze gas is a great tool, personally, it would be better fit for a diversion based offshoot of spy, someone who trades long range harassment for in the thick of it action by directly sabotaging the enemy and your models look lovely. Thank you, by the way. I mean, he's kind of nailed it on the head there uh, in what I was saying about using it as a diversion type class where you get up in the face of the enemy and you throw that freeze gas, you make them lose their turn, especially if you think about all the single player missions where the AI are placed close together. It would really come in handy there compared to the tranquilizer where you can only shoot individual pigs. It just makes you think really, I suppose. But thank you for your comment. Uh, moving on. Next up, we have a comment from Robu. R Robu? That's a real tongue twister. Um, but he says, I think colored clothing should be obvious from all directions. The civilian and warden both have a blind spot for their upper body colored clothing, the armband from the side and the shirt from the back. Uh, the warden's got a hat, but I feel like that's still too little. Personally, I'd focus on the pants for color. That's fair enough. A full colored top looks like a military uniform, so I'd avoid that for all ranks. Colored pants instead to me just look like colored civilian pants and they offer a lot of clear visible surface. I like the idea of white shirts. They look very civilian and kind of act like a uniform for citizens. I would stick with that for all ranks, keep it visible to mark the class. To distinguish the ranks you could add details like low ranks get suspenders uh, in their color, uh, middle ranks gain a cap in their color and high ranks two armbands or maybe a sash. See, I feel like the sash is overused, again, you know, because it's mainly used in the medic class. So I wanted to get away, like I said, from all of the other classes and their styles in particular. Uh, I know that the, the model I'm using is based off of the grunt. So what I've done is I have, you know, selected stuff. I've deleted things. I've added stuff in. Uh, so for the civilian, he is the closest to the grunt. Uh, you could possibly be because his front texture is essentially exactly the same. Uh, he goes on to say, other ideas to differentiate ranks could be a vest. 
overall pants or half rolled up sleeves. Uh, the issue with sleeves is that you really need to try and match the skin tone uh, of the pig. Now, all the pigs have the same skin color, uh, but I've never really ventured uh, any further than just sort of keeping them all at long sleeve. I may look at doing that in future, and I was also thinking of doing overall pants that were like chest high uh, and, you know, actually modeling the breeches as well that could then go over his shoulders just to bring out some more 3D detail because... You know, all the textures uh, for the pig models are 2D simple textures. There's no additional modeling. Uh, and I did obviously add that for the Commissar as he has a belt. Um, but I was close to not using that uh, just because there was a point when it wasn't looking that great. The Commissar went through several design uh, choices and changes both in terms of its texture and in terms of its design. Originally, I wanted the Commissar to have like uh, an Australian World War One, uh, like it's not quite a cowboy hat, but it's think of the, the the hat that the sniper wears in TF2, that kind of hat, but part of it is like curved upwards and attached to the main base portion of the hat. I'll probably show an image or something uh, so you can see what I mean. But yeah, Commissar went through lots of different changes. But anyway, he goes on to say. Uh, I just really would stick with a clearly visible white shirt to announce their nature. Your designs don't really feel like they have a coherent design. I mean, they look good individually, but they don't seem to belong together. Now, that I understand, um, but that's only because I wanted to create something that was completely different. So each class within the Resistance class is completely different, but they still relate to the overall theme, you know? So, again, you know, a civilian, a warden, and a commissar, they're all sort of mixed in together into that resistance theme. It was difficult to pick the name for the middle class because originally I had it named as uh, a leader and then I went to an officer, but that was too uh, militaristic. So then I picked warden. I don't know, I'm thinking of like French resistance again, but uh, not the French resistance. I'm thinking of the French revolution uh, where, you know, they would round up the aristocracy and uh, imprison them and you would have wardens you know it's it's still based on the people that kind of thing and again commissar like i said attached to the uh communist political party and civilians are civilians they are everyday people um but yeah i agree with you on that one the designs are individual in themselves uh, and put them together you wouldn't exactly think that they're in the same class so I agree with you on that one, but thank you for your in-depth comment. It is very appreciated. Uh, but we're going to move on to uh, the other classes that uh, Castor has come up with. Uh, so starting with the Scout rank, which he has uh, created entirely based around the Scout. So the Scout is the top rank you can be. Uh, the lowest rank, the starting rank, is the Spotter, which would have... 60 health and would have a knife, a rifle, jetpack, grenades, uh, three grenades and two mines. Uh, they do 20 damage and of course they do not end your turn after one use as it is in the regular game. Uh, the middle class is the Pathfinder. That's a, a, a pretty good name as well. 60, no, 85 health. Uh, it would have a cattle prod, a rifle, jetpacks, four grenades and three mines. Again, only doing 20 damage each. Uh, and finally, you have the Scout, which is really odd being at the top of the rank, but that's also kind of cool, I guess. Um, with 110 health, Cattle Prod, Rifle, Rifle Burst, three jetpacks, uh, one Rifle Burst, by the way, uh, four grenades, and three mines, and a Special Ops, which I'm not too sure about. But that is a good uh, use of health pools as well. They don't stick to the meta of being 75, 90, 120, uh, he's kind of gone for something different, which is something I also incorporate into the uh, other class ideas that I have, which you'll see in future videos. Uh, in terms of weaponry, though, I feel like it is a little bit weak. The two main ingredients here are the grenades and the mines, which I'm not too sure on because, you know, the scout is, I mean, I'm not entirely sure what uh, it's meant to be. I, I feel like it's an in-between, again, between the espionage and the engineer class because you have incorporations of both with the cattle prods 
and the mines and the grenades. You have maneuverability with the jetpacks, but the, the rifle burst on the scout uh, doesn't seem to fit well with me either because you only have one of them. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. I don't like the combination of mines and grenades because they kind of cancel each other out. If you're going to plant a single mine, you the most damage you can then do with that is 20 uh, because reliably uh, the rifle only moves the pig, you know, slightly, whereas a grenade will blast them away. So you can't combine the mine with anything else, I guess, until you get to the scout rank. But again, three shots from a rifle burst can push a pig. It does have quite a, a chunky bit of knockback. So I'm, I'm struggling to see, you know, what the overall aim is with this character. And that's not me being incredibly critical. It's just that I'm, I'm very uh, picky with the weapons that I have or that I give or that I use in Hogs of War. And of course, the special ops currently, as it is, uh, isn't really helpful. I feel like when you get to the scout rank, there should be something in there that is a little bit more hard hitting. And again, having a combination of a rifle and a rifle burst, I prefer to stick to uh, having a single rifle based weapon with any class. You look at the espionage class, you have either a rifle or a sniper rifle. You look at the medic class, you either have uh, a rifle or a rifle burst, I think. I think the medic is the only one that has both of them. And I've never seen the point of it because when you get to a surgeon, you're going to use the rifle burst or you're going to use the tranquilizer. You don't, you know, end up using the rifle on its own. It, it's just unnecessary. So I guess this this idea sort of incorporates espionage, medic, and engineer. Uh, of course, there's no healing, but the rifle burst is the closest thing to that. Maybe you could replace it with, I don't know, roller grenades. Maybe take something that is in the multiplayer and, and, and chuck it in there, but maybe that goes against it. But again, you know, it's, it's, it's a very tricky one. I think if you can specify uh, what it is that this class is meant to do, what is their objective, uh, maybe it will make things a little bit clearer. Next up, we have a funky one of the Missile Man ranks, uh, starting with the Bullet Man, who has 75 health. Then the Rocket Man, who has 90 health, and the Missile Man, who has 120. That is a good example of uh, sticking to the meta, but the Bullet Man at 75 health has a Trotter, Pistol, Rocket Launcher, and Grenade Launcher. Now that, for me, is contra not controversial. I just have never had good feelings towards the Grenade Launcher. Uh, the Rocket Man has a Trotter, Pistol, Rocket Launcher, Homing Missile, and grenade launcher and the missile man has a trotter pistol rocket launcher homing missile guided missile and grenade launcher so it does what it says on the tin it is very straightforward i don't know i mean between the ranks of bullet and rocket man uh, you have a single use of the rocket launcher so once that's used up uh, you have the grenade launcher that, that does 30 damage and it doesn't seem to have a limit on the grenade launcher either So I'd, I'd have to say that's pretty well balanced My only issue with it is that the AI tend to prioritize the grenade launcher above everything else uh, So whether or not that would cause issues who knows um, But the rocket man like I said only has a single use of the rocket launcher as well and a single homing missile uh, but the Missile Man is when things start to get juicy and you have two rocket launchers, one homing missile and one guided missile. Whether or not that's too much damage overall, I think in total that would be a hundred... No, wait, no. That would be uh, 235 damage output uh, overall. No, that's completely wrong. My math is terrible. 215 damage overall. Uh, that's not counting the grenade launcher damage either. That's just the, you know, the primary heavy weapons of rocket homing and guided missiles. So it incorporates all of those major elements and it seems like a really fun class. But personally, I feel like it would work better 
in multiplayer, only because most people would probably see it as being overpowered, similar to the Grenadier rank in multiplayer, which is actually the final one we're going to move on to. So Caster has created the Grenadier ranks of Private Tosser, which in British slang is uh, a little bit offensive, <laughs> and the Grenadier. So the Private has 70 health, the Tosser has... <laughs> the Tosser has 85 and the Grenadier has 115. So uh, the Private has a Trotter Rifle Grenade of 1, a Roller Grenade of 1, and a High Explosive Grenade of 1. That's very interesting. Uh, the Tosser has a Trotter Rifle, 2 Grenades, 1 Roller Grenade, 1 High Explosive Grenade, and 1 Shrapnel Grenade. And finally, the Grenadier has a Trotter Rifle, Three grenades, two roller grenades, two high explosive grenades, one shrapnel grenade, and one cluster bomb grenade thing. Wow. So, it is extremely overpowered from the get-go. If you look at the private, having a high explosive grenade at that level is, is just too powerful. Because you can one-shot the majority of the low rank health thing, or at least take out 90% of their health in single player. So this definitely has to remain in multiplayer for me. But, I mean, again, it's similar to the Missile Man rank because it incorporates what it says it's going to incorporate of grenades. And it picks every single grenade that is currently in the game and plunks it in there at a good rate. But the Grenadier has, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven weapons. I guess that's kind of the norm, I suppose, of that rank. Maybe you, you'd kind of tone it down and have six, but... Those are all the grenades. Those are all of his ideas. Let me know what you think about them as well in the comments. Let's get discussion going on both of, well, both of our ideas and everybody else's thoughts. Because overall, guys, that is going to wrap it up for this podcast. Yeah, I promise that I will be making more of these in future and, you know, a bit more regularly. I don't want to wait another three months. Um, like I said, I am trying to fit things in as much as possible. I don't really have a schedule. You guys know that. I just make things whenever I want to. But yeah, do you agree with my thoughts? Do you agree with all of our ideas and concepts and overall thinking? Let me know in the comments. And in the meantime, I will catch you guys later for the next one.